Don't look up. The European Space Agency says the space rock has a 1 in 83 chance of hitting us in just over seven years' time. Astronomer David Whitehouse joining us now. Hi, David. How worried should we be? I think this has the potential to be very serious indeed. The current odds on this rock striking us in 2032 are down to 1 in 67, which is unacceptable to ignore. We only have another couple of months to observe this rock before it goes out of sight. Now, what will probably happen is that the orbit will be refined and it'll go down to a very, very low probability. It, it won't hit us at all. But should it remain somewhere around about 1 in 67 or even 1 in 100, then we face a problem because we will not see this rock again until 2028. And that's the time we will have to take measures to deflect it. So we've got some very serious decisions to make. We cannot ignore this rock. for the, It's the highest probability of an impact I can recall. And it has the potential, the possibility, for being an emergency for planet Earth. Oh, we need to take it seriously, David, from what you're saying. Uh, what, why, what might be able to do in 2028 if it hasn't changed its trajectory? Well, should it not go away as a risk, which it's probably going to do, but as I said, we cannot ignore that, we may have to consider emergency deflection measures. Now, this will involve perhaps reaching the asteroid in 2028 and trying to nudge it slightly out of its orbit so that four years later it misses us. And you could do that either with uh, an impact and NASA has impacted other asteroids to see the effect on their orbit and their trajectory, and that has worked to a limited extent. But it might not work for this object. It may well be we might even have to consider the severe measures of sending up a nuclear weapon to the surface of this asteroid in order to deflect it further. This is probably going to go away, as all other lower probability impacts have done in the past. But this is a high probability impact compared to everything else. I mean, one in 67 is unacceptable to ignore. We buy, people buy lottery tickets in the hope of winning, and that's a chance of one in 14 million. So okay. we have to keep a close eye on this object because it could turn out to be the most dangerous thing in space. How often do we see asteroids like this? Well, you find, we find asteroids very effectively. There are many surveys um, with various types of instruments who are observing the sky, making maps of the sky every night, several times a night. So we find objects which have a, a chance, a very small probability, usually down in the thousands um, of striking the Earth sometime in the next few decades, but they've always gone away when you refine the orbit, when you get more measurements and uh, the measurement becomes more precise. So we're finding objects like this all the time. We only found this particular object, 2024 YR4, in December. So we could find another one in a month's time or now or next year, which has an even higher probability of impact. This impact like this whether or not this turns out to be threatening to us, will happen in the future. There was an object which struck Siberia in 1908, which had it encountered the Earth a few hours earlier, could have devastated London. These things happen every few thousand years, every few hundred years. Now, luckily, most of Earth is empty space. Most of the Earth is empty space. And uh, that's getting increasingly less these days as we populate the planet. But I can't stress strongly enough that this is a threat that's not a bit of astro fun, that's not a bit of, gosh, isn't it amazing? This actually could turn out to be a serious threat to our planet. Could we redirect it or blow it up um, we don't know. We don't... well? We don't know. Uh, we have directed the NASA's DART mission a few years ago, uh, change the orbit of a binary asteroid, and the companion orbiting a main asteroid, a little bit. It worked, and there's another mission going towards that system to see exactly what happened. We could. The, uh, the only chance to nudge this thing into a slightly different orbit, as I said, is in 2028. So that's only a couple of years ago. We don't, we've carried out many studies of how to deflect an asteroid, but we've done very little experimentation work. We need to find out about this asteroid, what it's made of, what its surface is like, what its orbit is. 
because if we do have to confront it, we may have to have an emergency planetary defense policy to send an asteroid, send a space mission to it with perhaps, well, obviously, untested technology. It, it could be uh, an extremely worrying time. Aren't asteroid, all asteroids made of the same thing? They're different, actually. They're, um, we've, there was another story in the media about asteroid Bennu, the picture of which you, you showed recently, which um, had lots of life um, potential chemicals on board, the building blocks of life. It's a far far cry from saying there is life there, but these are the, the basic raw starter material for life. The other asteroids have lots of, um, lots of carbon, lots of different types of minerals that very complex things in many respects. Some asteroids are stony, some asteroids are made of iron. It's the iron ones that, that uh, basically if, are diff going to be difficult to uh, to deal with if they should strike planet Earth. So we know a great deal about asteroids. They're very varied. Uh, we have to look at this one over the next couple of months, which is all we've got. Um, the James Webb Space Telescope is being tasked to look at it as various other observatories on the ground and in space because we need to know more about its surface structure. We need to know more about, um, about its orbit. Now, thankfully, hopefully, this will go away as we find out more. But sooner or later, as we continue to observe the sky with the scrutiny and the precision we've done now, we will find an object, whether it's this one or next decade or in the next century, we will find an object that's heading for us.